Hello and welcome to another Incarnate live stream. Welcome everybody. Welcome to another Incarnate live stream. Today we're going to be uh, continuing on our how to create points of interest. So part two, part use. I'm excited about that. We did uh, part one last month and so it's time to continue this on. I'm excited. We've got lots of cool little things to make. And I just have a quick few announcements that I would like to do before we get started. Uh, one, I just want to mention that new calendar is up. So go check that out. One moment here, I'll put that up for you. This is the May stream calendar. It's up on my profile. Go check that out. I uh, just you know that uh, Cheryl, that's SL Mummy, is going to be moderating the stream. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. This is the May calendar. It's up. I put it on YouTube and it's also on Discord as well as the events. Go join our Discord if you haven't. Super important that you do. Uh, for this month or this week, we're going to be doing the points of interest today. And then on Wednesday, we'll be doing how to create heraldry uh, with all the various styles. I'm excited about that. Heraldry is a ton of fun, so we'll be covering that. Hey, King Clown, welcome. Glad that you're here. Another announcement I want to mention is on our Discord, we've just added a new channel called Stream Request Channel, and it's in there hacked away with the other uh, request channels, so the Feature Request Channel and the Art Request Channel. Just look for those, and then you'll see the Stream Request Channel just right below those. So if you have any ideas or suggestions or things that you want to see, go ahead and join our Discord. Don't forget to first click the Roles channel and to get that Incarnator role so you can access all the different channels. And then look for the Request uh, Stream Request channel, and make sure you follow the instructions on the channel first before you decide to give a suggestion. Okay, all right, so let's not waste any time. Let's go right in. Uh, remember today, it's, we're going to create points of interest with the fantasy world style. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And we made a, about eight last time. It took about two hours to do eight, so hopefully we can fit another eight in. Go ahead and look over uh, the ones that are left, and if you have any suggestions, feel free to ask. Don't forget, we've got uh, a we've got human, dwarf, orc elf undead and then of course there's villages towns city capital temple tower castle and wonder so if any of those interest you let me know obviously we've already done the tower for the human and a village but any of the empty slots if you see anything interesting let me know and we'll jump into that super excited these are so much fun to make and we're not using the uh, the flat front facing stamps we're kind of using the isometric style stamps if you look carefully, I'm not really using any of the flat front facing. You see there's a couple dimensions here. So we're going to be using those. If no one has a suggestion on where to start, I can pick one. I think someone on YouTube had recommended a, a dwarven like mining camp, and that might work great for like a town for dwarf. And I think, well, it looks like this is already a town here. What about a, a dwarven mining city kind of setup where there are like some mines that you have to access? So... I think I'll go with that one. So we'll get started with that. Happy Monday, everybody, by the way. Not the best day of the week, but hey, at least we get to hang out and enjoy it together, right? So thank you, everyone. So let's go jump right in. I'm going to go with the dwarf, and I want to make kind of a mining camp. As you would expect, dwarves like to, in the fantasy sense, like to go and dig underground for ore to get metals and things like that, kind of tropey for them. So it's a good place to start. And we want to create first, let's say, like a mine. And so let's say that I want to make, take a mountain from it. So just a regular mountain. I think they even have kind of dwarven mountains as well. You could take a look. Let me type in real quick. I think they do. Yeah, right here, dwarven mountains. And they already have stuff on them. Let's just zoom in real quick and take a look at it. So you see there's already kind of some... A mine already set up here and there's already some things popping out here so you can use that as a start if you wish or you can do more it's up to you I always like to start with my first stamp when I'm making a POI is generally to put like a mountain or a hill or some kind of landscape and then from there I can start putting on my structures when I start adding on top of it so we're doing a dwarven kind of uh, city 
mining camp. So you would expect first like a mountain because that's where you dig your ore or some kind of a quarry. And a quarry is where you'd like start digging down and start pulling out the materials from a quarry. So whichever way that you want to use it, I'm going to go with this one. I think this works just fine. I think there's another one too that might work better. Let me just double check. I think there's two of these mountains. I think I like this one a little bit better because I kind of like that front entrance there. And so this is that first one. And then from here, you can add further things to it. So if you want, you can maybe put like a tower at the very top of it that kind of watches over the mining camp down below. So you can just go into the catalog and just type in dwarf. And you see there's already some dwarf towers here. There's one here and one here. So I'll just click this one and go up a layer because I'm going to stack it on top of here. And this one is just going to act as kind of like a sentry tower. And I know there's kind of these baked in shadows, so you can move it further down if you don't want the shadows. You can see some shadows at the base of it. You don't want those shadows to be showing up. Then just put them far down enough to where you don't see them. And so this is kind of that lookout tower. And I like to add a little bit more than just one uh, particular land feature. So if I use that particular mountain, then maybe I'd like to use the same one. So I'll go up. And I think these mountains right here are the same style as this one right here. And so it's nice to put down a couple first and kind of use these to kind of make, maybe I'll make a, a pit or some kind of quarry. And then these rocks or mountain pieces right here will ring around, around it. So first we'll put down a couple. Let's just scale them down as we go. A little bit smaller, one right here. Okay. Just making kind of an arc shape because right here where the mining camp is going to be. Now I've used this, uh, this crater right here. So I could consider using, using that just to leave every single thing. Oopsie. Let's just start at the top, click dead trees, shift, hold down shift and you'll be able to select everything except for the crater. And I just press delete. And what's interesting about if you delete everything in a group, except for one stamp, you can actually rename, rename uh, the stamp. So if you were like, well, I always forget how to name. If you want to be able to la label your own stamp, you can do that. Just put a couple items in a group and then delete everything but the one item and then just relabel the group. And that's the way that you can label a group if you want to do that. You don't have to. I'm going to take this same one and I think I'm going to actually use it, take it down a layer. And I want to be careful about this, so I think I'll place it down right here like this, kind of line up some of the line work, and then also line up some of this. So I'll put this one here, and then line up this one here. And so you have this little kind of some mountains right here. Let's push this one in a little bit. And in fact, I'll even go to transform. You see there's filters under the advanced settings and then transform. And you can change the height and width. So I'm gonna change the width of this one just a little bit. And let's just go ahead and center it, make it a little bit bigger. Remember, it's kind of a city, so we might want to put some other stuff on it, right? So on top of all these peaks, you can put some kind of structure if you wish. I'll put down just a couple more. There's a tall peak right here. I'll line it up with the line work. And of course, I'll transform it as well. So I'll go in, I'm going to select it, transform, change the width, and then put it down like this. And it's always try to make sure to line up the line work because that is what kind of helps gives it some kind of continuity. I'm going to go ahead and place that one there. Now for every little mountain that I've added, I'm going to put something on top of it. Let's go down a couple layers and put one in the back. One right here as well, because I'm going to put some stuff on top of these. And that works whenever you put something on top of a hill or a mountain that acts as a natural defense because attackers will have to go uphill. That gives you an advantage because you are you can shoot arrow, arrows farther, uh, throw a lance. Uh, they Soldiers or enemies, attackers have to go up and that gives them more work. So whenever you're trying to think about defenses for any kind of position, whether it's for a keep, uh, a castle, uh, whatever it is that you're, you're putting together for your POI, it's nice to put them on some kind of elevation to give them that defensive. So natural defenses work fantastic. So now that I've done that, I want to put, maybe put some buildings on top of each one of these peaks. Hello, Beatrix Ray. Welcome. Glad that you're here. I'm going to turn off these custom assets real quick. I'll type in dwarf real quick. 
There we go. And I have all the structures right here. Remember, we're not using the flat facing ones. We're using these kind of isometric ones. So for starters, we can pick some, uh, like we want to maybe create a forge because this is where you're going to have uh, where you're mining ore. So let's put this maybe on top, on top of this one right here, or you can bring it up close because you want it closer to the mine. And let's push it up another layer so it's in front. So if you want, you can put it right here. Even you can line it up, push it up one more. Up one, there we go. So here you kind of have materials to a gate. You might have maybe a forge there. And if you want, you can add more iconic buildings. There's this dwarven city kind of icon right here. You can put another one on top. And then we'll put maybe just one, a couple more on top of the other buildings. These kind of a circular building right here. This works kind of nice. I'll put one on top there, one on top of this one. And let's see what other ones we have. Uh, this blue one will work just fine. We can put that on top of this one. There we go. Let's see what other options we have. And there's some nice smaller little buildings. And we can kind of populate the ground a little bit by adding some, some buildings there. I think these should be more of a group, but they're not. So I'll put this together, put one there. And let's put another one right here. Okay, there we go. Let's just go ahead and zoom out and just see what the overall shape looks like. And the only thing that's kind of missing is to put down some kind of roads to kind of show that there is a um, way to walk around. So we'll take a path and the paths work great for roads. I just like to put one down first so that way it's live and I can see what it looks like editing it. This little tiny little thing right here in the corner where it says style right below, there's a preview, but it kind of just doesn't really show you the color or anything like that. It just kind of shows you what things look like. So I'll use this and I'm going to change, I want no shadow and I'm probably going to change the blend mode as well. So I'm going to put this path on top of the crater and that way I can see it interact with the crater. And I'll just go ahead and place a couple down light and, and see which one that overlay might work okay. Might even have to drop the opacity just a hair and maybe even include a white shadow. Just a little bit, there we go. Okay, and I think that might work for roads. And so we'll start with one going obviously to here and maybe winding up to there and then maybe put the path leading over here and then maybe a path leading to here. And then it can go over this cliff and then kind of wander off this way if you want. So it kind of goes off that way. And there are some final things that you can throw in. You can throw in smoke from some stacks. You can throw in some trees uh, to kind of change things up. Sometimes I like to add in some things below here. This is kind of a, an odd transition right here. So you can throw in maybe some little foothills or something to kind of break that up. So we'll throw in a hill. I'm going to use the brown one. Let's just use the same material. This one right here is barren. And I'm just going to throw in a couple. So one, I throw in some big ones at the top and the farther away from the structure, the further away from this uh, city there is, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. So now I can start making them a tad bit smaller. And maybe some back here. And then if you want, you can throw in some trees. It's a mining place, so a lot of the trees is being used for timber, for making equipment. So maybe throw in a dead tree. Just like there's dead trees in this one. You can throw in some dead trees if you want. And you can put them on top of a hill, next to a hill, behind a hill. And the more kind of overlapping you do, the better it looks. So if I throw a couple in front of these hills, and on top of a couple hills, and then I can also put them behind some hills. So if I go back, click one, and then behind, you'll see there's a hill behind here, or not a hill, sorry, a tree behind this one, a tree behind here, and maybe here. Throw in a bunch. There we go. And I always like to scale down and just make some smaller ones because in nature, there's the trees aren't going to be all one size. They're going to be varying sizes. So it's nice to throw in some various size of your trees. And that includes varying sizes of hills, mountains, because there's so much diversity in nature. It doesn't make much sense to have all your trees be the exact same size 
or any stamp be the exact same size outside of trying to get the scale correct, okay? Now from there, we have a nice city here and I can go ahead and just select everything and then group it, of course. And I believe this is a Dwarven city. So let me all scale it down just a little bit and we'll rename it Dwarf City. Okay, yeah, that looks fine to me. I'm okay with that. 108 changes, didn't take too long to make it. Just 15 minutes, that's not too bad. Does anyone have any ideas about the future one? Let me know. We'll go ahead and save, waiting. Anyone, suggestions for the future one? What do you wanna do? Should we take, should we make like a monument or something? What you thinking? Oh, must be early morning. Not many people here today. Well, I know Mondays are busy, right? Always so, so busy. All right, we'll wait for it to save and we'll keep going. Since no one has any suggestions, that's fine. I will move forward and get one started. I personally love monuments. Kind of just taking these ideas right from the Age of Empire series. An elf monument? Yeah, that'd be sweet. We have an elf castle, but we don't have an... Or, I'm sorry, not a... Yeah, a wonder. Sorry, a wonder. So, an elf wonder. Yeah, I mean, what would you want to do? Let's see, we already have a large elf capital right here on top of a large tree. So, we'd have to think about what exactly we'd want this wonder to be. So... Honestly, we've already used the tree theme, so I don't know if I want to continue with that. And as you know, I mean, elves don't have to be trees. There's different types of elves in fantasy, all different kinds. And so it doesn't have to be a tree. It could be anything you want it to be. Uh, an elf monument, maybe a giant statue, maybe uh, maybe like a wor the world tree. Maybe it's um, so many different options here. Let me look at what we have for elven stamps, and we can kind of figure out how we want to go about doing a monument like maybe an elven gate that leads to like the elder lands or something like that that'd be kind of cool like here's a massive a massive gate and we can change the color oh yeah a hero or a statue and i don't know if we have statues for the fantasy world style i don't think we do but we can check let me just see i don't think so well that's unfortunate oh, i think that's a request that we might want to add, right? Heck yeah, I totally think we should. Yeah, well, I think for now, because we don't have statues, though I love that idea, uh, we should maybe go with like an elven gate. So a gate that kind of leads to, uh, in the Lord of the Rings, there's the undying lands. So maybe we can create like a fantasy land um, that the elves go to when they've kind of reached the prime of their life and they're ready to kind of move on to these lands and so i'm gonna kind of adorn my gate by giving it some tower supports on the side here and of course i maybe want to put it on top of something so i could put it on top of a tree i could put it on top of a mountain or a hill it really just depends maybe i want to create like a mystical um pagoda or a, a center piece in the center like a courtyard or something that kind of leads to the gate so a lot of different options. Let me just kind of go back in here and take a look. And I kind of want to put it on some, top of something. And I've kind of used craters and all that stuff. Or maybe just using a hill might be a good idea. And I'll start with a green one and then kind of pick one that's going to work the best. So I'm going to bring it down a layer. Make sure that it's all beneath, excuse me, beneath these stamps. So we'll go down like this. And we might have to do some changes, increase the size, and maybe even increase the height of it. So I'll go back and increase the height. So go up and increase the height of it. And if I want, I can even make it interesting and maybe change the color to suit, to suit the overall theme. So if I want, I could make it blue. I even change crazy looking trees, maybe some white trees, because it's giving it an ethereal, like kind of a different feel to it. Like I want the gate to show that it doesn't just go to anywhere. It goes to, you know, uh, the the promised land or whatever to the elves let's keep going in and we can add more stuff as we go we don't have statues but we do have these kind of heraldic images and these might work okay maybe as some decoration so we can maybe put one of these behind like this 
and maybe it there's a kind of a symbol in the background and I'll go ahead and bring it down like this so we'll put it down and I might want to increase the saturation of this one to really give it some pop and I can change the hue if I want gold and blue works together or I can just stick with the whole blue theme if you want up to you I kind of like the gold I think blue and yellow are work colors work quite well so we'll stick with that and I know it's a flat it's not really an isometric piece but there are no statues so we have to work with this and so this is the overall feeling that I have so far and then maybe you want to put something down here at the bottom so we can go check out some options here I want to kind of create like a ring of trees that kind of creates like a courtyard or something in front of it uh, something like that I'm not so sure and we can test things out I'm going to try to stick within the same style so I won't want to change things too much I'm going to go in and maybe pick a compass and kind of use it as either a guide or an actual use it as my actual uh, courtyard stamp and so I'm going to change the height of it to flatten it out so it kind of looks like it's a little more flat like this and I might want to change the hue as well so let me go filters change the hue I could go with blue or I could stick with that gold color like I have up there there's some gold so we can stick with that we can change the brightness a bit or we can just stick with that blue if you wish instead up to you how you want to go about it so I could maybe put this right here leading right up to it and then I can go ahead and choose some white trees which are not snowy trees for this particular case but we're going to use them as maybe some kind of special tree specialty tree and of course we'll want to zoom them up one thing I want to do is I want to hide that there's some uh, these towers right here unless you want your characters to go into the towers that maybe the t inside the towers is the mechanism in which the gate operates and maybe there's like a lever in each tower that you know activates or turns off the gate and that way there's some kind of safety precaution so that that way only the elves can get in because they know the mechanism so I'm going to take some trees now go up a couple layers and I'll just put a few at the base right here maybe even one in front because it kind of looks nice to throw one in front and of course put a couple in front of the compass as well like this a couple at the base and I'll throw in ones that are just slightly larger as well we'll go with that size issue so I'll go with a couple large ones here and there and then I'll take it down to even smaller one so nice and tiny There we go oh let's put a couple in the back here there we go and so now you kind of have this nice kind of gate now if you want you can put something in the center of it of that thing so if you want you can take like a world tree stamp and just place it right on the top like this if you want or you can put another tree there if you wish you don't like that tree maybe try a different one maybe you want to try this one it, again it's kind of flat so if you don't like that one put that one there or you can just take one giant white tree and just put it in the center or put something else in the center if there's like a, an elven circular building maybe that would look good so you can put like a maybe a pagoda in the center like this so that that way there's a place that um, you can go to first before entering in so lots of different options I think I like that that looks good to me just going to select everything group it of course and this is a elf uh, monument or I believe it's a wonder so elf wonder nice one good suggestion by the way yeah super cool oopsie did I group the both of them together I think I did yikes oh yep I selected both <laughs> oops <laughs> let me just undo that real quick didn't mean to select them both but it's okay Okay, I'll go ahead and select every one of these, group, copy, paste, delete, and just open it up. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, you can change that to change the object glow. Absolutely. Fantastic idea. You're talking about, but which thing are, am I changing? Which is giving a glow? You're talking about the, the heraldic symbol, the gate. I'm not sure which one you're referring to there let me go ahead and save this real quick while you answer that question sweet we are going yeah I love this thing I love 
Love making little gates like this. These are fun, exciting stuff. So we've done an undead monument or a wonder, and we've also did the elf wonder. Awesome, sweet. Wonders are my favorite. The center tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I removed the center tree. I just put in that pagoda. But, but yeah, agreed. You can just totally change the hue to change the glow to a different color. Absolutely, King Clown. Agreed. Yay, I'm glad I got smart people in the chat. For those of you who just waltzed in, just so you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask SL Mumby. They're moderating the stream. Okay, we've saved it, and we've made two more. We made a... Uh, a dwarf city that's a kind of a mining camp and then we also created our elf wonder which is awesome okay so we gotta pick our next one and i don't let's step away from wonders we just did them let's maybe do a a castle because castles are super fun and let's maybe do a human one and human castles are not difficult it's just like in reality you want to when you're thinking about your castle you're going to want to think about a defensive position you clearly don't want to put your castle in a flat valley uh there's not much defenses unless you're going to build the mound uh normally you don't want to have to excavate all this uh, material to create a giant mound to build your castle on you might want to use a natural hill a mountain a, a rock shelf whatever it is you want to use so that way you don't have to move as much material as much manpower whatever to kind of carry that out so again use a mountain uh or a hill to create uh that natural defense and so we'll kind of pick one and i we haven't done anything grayish so maybe i'll pick a grayish looking mountain this dark gray mountain will work just fine i'll put it in yes if you have any questions feel free to ask cheryl all right so i'll first pick a mountain that i want a size that might work well let's go with this one and we're going to pick a castle and i think there's some really nice stamps in here that have uh some castle so let's pick a couple now i do think there's just a straight up castle in here somewhere let me type in castle i think there is one uh this one right here this human castle too and i really like this one it's kind of a got has kind of a gothic feel to it uh i kind of like it and it's kind of a great personally it's a great mountain i like or a great stamp i really like the overall height how tall the hill how tall the walls are you have a gatehouse right here with some stairs leading up into it. And you got like a buttress holding kind of this side of this wall. You've got a series of towers. So it's a really nice stamp. Works great. I really like this one. And of course, just line up the line work. So put it on top of the hill. Now, if you don't like uh, the colors, you can just change it. It's HSBC. So that's up to you. I might make this one just a little bit lighter because it's dark, just like that dark mountain. So I can increase the brightness just a hair if I want just to make it pop out just a little bit more so castles are of course is a wonder so i let's go back to castle over here i'm going to boost the size up and now there are a couple options that you can go about going with a castle there's a series of defenses that are available that you can use and one of them is what's called a a barbican now i don't think once cannons were invented they were kind of dropped and not used anymore so just due to military advancements, Barbicans didn't, they don't no longer create them. So I'll just show you what a Barbican looks like if I can create one. First, we'll just take a bridge. We'll do some fun stuff with a castle. I'll just take this first bridge like this, and I'm going to line it up right against here, up against the castle. So it goes right into the gate. So that's your first step right there. We're going to do that one. Next, I'm gonna create a Barbican. And with the Barbican, I think I can just use a tower or use two towers and maybe, let me just double check what my options are here real quick. One moment. A Barbican is like an additional gatehouse that stands outside from the actual gatehouse, which is attached to the walls. So a Barbican is a separate, kind of a separate piece from it. And I'm not sure what exactly to use for a Barbican. There are a couple options. I, have, I can stack together a couple towers to make a Barbican. So I could try that. So I could take a couple of these towers and just put them side by side and then put a gate maybe next to it. So I'll put two of these side by side. 
a matter of fact, maybe even three might not be a bad idea. So I have three here. And let's see where the options are. Sometimes you have to piece things together because they don't have what you're looking for, and that's okay. All right, we'll put this. I'm going to put some of these on top, and I might want to change the color. So we've already got this bluish theme, so maybe I want to stick with it. Or you can have like an or ornate gate where it's actually red instead of blue, and that's just fine. So I'll just create a little barbican right here, and see I put these two, to, these are four stamps together, five stamps together. Let's go ahead and unselect that, and then put this right here up against here so you have a little bit of a barbican and I'm going to group them as well so that way I, they're all on the same layer I'm going to put it up against here like this and so there's like an additional bit layer of defense there and of course just take that same gate that same bridge put it in front here like this and so you kind of have a barbican leading up to the castle so it's an extra layer of defense and if you feel like uh, it doesn't connect with the ground well enough it's always great to go in and just take a couple mountains and just put them underneath and that way they kind of match together. So I could go ahead and put this mountain right here, put one right here, put another one right here. And you can even put one in front of it too. So let's put one maybe in the back right here like this and maybe put a couple up in the front. So it's not just one little mountain. There we go. Okay, and we'll put a couple in the back as well. One right there. Okay. Oopsie, in the back you go. There we go, okay. There we have our castle, and you have your defenses, of course. And you can put moats around your castle if you want. Uh, this terrain is very rocky and mountainous, not a lot of flat spots, so there's not a lot of opportunity for troops to gain formations and stuff like that. So it makes uh, the assault kind of difficult. So these are things that you can kind of add to kind of create. I understand that the angle is a little off on the Barbican, than it is from there and that's okay it doesn't have to be straight sometimes there's curvatures into the walkways that lead up to a gatehouse or a barbican and that's on purpose it's so that uh, if it curves to a little bit to uh, the right and then you have some defenses in the back here uh, the shield is on the generally on the left side of the attacker or the person holding the weapon in the shield and so that way, if you have it curving a little bit to uh, the right, they have to rotate, the invader has to rotate their body fully to the right to bring their shield up to defend themselves, forcing them to sidestep. So think about positioning when you're doing your defenses, super important. So it just kind of does curve just slightly a little bit because we have some things here. And of course you can always just rotate if you want to add more curvature, but just know that you're gonna have to change the ground underneath if you want it to match out correctly. So just factor those things in. So if you want, you can do that. I'm gonna undo that. I kind of like it just the way it was before. So let's put it back to the way it was. And you can also throw in some trees if you want. I like to throw in just a couple trees. So I'll throw in, let's see here. We've used those white ones last. Uh, this brown one might work. I'm not sure, let's take a look. And of course you want to factor in the scale. Oh, this tree is fairly large, the size of a whole gate, and I like to put them, again, overlap things. First, let's go ahead and take one of these stones, one of these right here, and put it in the front like this because I don't want it to be just this flat line. I want there to be some kind of, some stamps to kind of make it look like uh, it's perched up against the rocks. So I put these stamps up against here like this, and that way, they kind of make sure you line up the line work and you're kind of fixing some of that line that goes straight against the mountain and that looks super weird. So we won't go with that. Let me pick some trees that I want, make sure they're the right size, scale them up. And I'll same thing, I'll just place them kind of rando. It's nice to put a couple in a cluster, like three or four. Again, kind of hide the line work of your mountains, put them up against here, or maybe a couple against here and maybe even against here. So you have a couple mountains with some trees because you want to include your landscape. Okay, and I think I think that's it. You, you can add a road if you want with the path tool leading up to here and going into the gate. So I'll go ahead and group this and we'll call this a human castle. Where are we at for time? 11.34, we've done three already? 
Oh, we're moving right along. Awesome. I like that. Human castle. Sweet. Make sure I spelled it right. I love it when I do my really fast typing and I say Uman Snassel or something. Like, I don't know what that is. What's a Norman Snassel? It sounds inappropriate, but I love inappropriate. It's fantastic. <laughs> inappropriate is most fun when you didn't mean to be inappropriate. <laughs> okay, where are we at? 74 changes. Go ahead and save. If people have any questions, feel free to ask myself or Cheryl. We'll be glad to, to answer any questions that you have. Super exciting. Hey, just so you know, I mean, I don't know if everyone knows this, but uh, we did. I do. I am changing all the streams to 11 a.m. moving forward. I'm sure everyone already knows this already, but for those of you who might not know, I'm just changing it to 11 a.m. I have a lawn service that comes out, and they're really noisy on Mondays. I really don't want to inflict that upon your eardrums. No, no, no. I want to spare you. So 11 a.m. is going to be PST on Mondays from moving forward, but every other stream not on a Monday. So if it happens on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's probably going to be at 10 a.m. PST. I just want you to be aware of that. All right, so we finished our, our human castle. We might want to go on to something different. We might want to do something, maybe an, an orc, perhaps. We've only got one, one orc item, so maybe we should do that. Okay, let's see here. We could make an orc village, which is simple. We could make an orc capital, a temple, a tower, or a wonder. We just did wonder and we did a castle. So maybe an orc temple might be good. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. And so maybe you guys want to throw out some tropes. What do you think about, like, what, what I mean, does a deity, does an orc worship a, a god or goddess of war? Do they... Uh, do they worship some kind of blood person? I mean, are they bad orcs? Are they good orcs? So, you know, factor in these kind of things. What kind of culture do they have? What religion is it that you're that they're a part of? And one thing I can do is kind of stick with the same theme that I've already have in here already. So I've got some volcanoes. I've got some, I've got a little tower that kind of leads up to this elf city uh encampment part up here malakath <laughs> so let's go with our orc uh temple and with a temple i mean there's a couple things you can do is the temple is it a fire goddess do we want to put it on top of a volcano like we did to our city is it a volcano goddess maybe we want to do that right so maybe pick a volcano of our choice and then maybe I can put, uh, let's try out some fun things here. So we have a volcano and up there, maybe the goddess lives or God or goddess lives inside the volcano. That's fine. But we also maybe want to create like a sentry, uh, someone to guard it. So maybe we want to put in some kind of hill or whatever, uh, and then maybe put a tower there. So maybe that's the sentry. So that, that way, no one's going to defile the goddess or god or whatever it is that you're using. So maybe we can go in and choose an orc tower to kind of be our defense leading up to there. So we got some nice towers here. Let's use this one. This one's kind of an interesting shape. I kind of like it. And so we kind of have this thing here. We're going to place it one stamp up and put it on top of this hill right here. And this is kind of our sentry. It's going to be guarding maybe a staircase that we want to going up to here maybe and then maybe put something on the rim of the volcano. Maybe there's some magic that protects uh, this rim right here. So we can put some things there if we wanted to. So we'll go back to the orc and we can put some smaller items like maybe there's a high priest that maybe lives in a tent or something like that. So we can go through these orc buildings and maybe pick one. So. Yeah, maybe there's a high priest that lives on top of here and they're protected by some kind of magic. So we'll put that one on top right there. Or you can put it on top right here. Higher up might be fine. And we maybe want to take a bridge and use the bridge as a ramp. And I've showed this in the last one. These, uh, these bridges, the front view, works great because there's line work in the center that kind of makes it look like stair stairs and so they work great for ramps so i like to put one like right here and another one right here 
and then where you have this kind of staircase kind of leading up uh, to the volcano and of course maybe we want to push the tower kind of close to there because they're they're kind of the sentry right protecting it so let's go ahead and move if I can do it right I don't think I can <laughs> okay let's put that right over here either over here right here might work good let's see here right here might be fine might even want to add a second one so maybe there are these two towers that are kind of protecting it or you can put a tower on one of these peaks right here you can do that as well so I can copy paste one and then put one maybe up here like this or put one at the top somewhere maybe on the side right here maybe you want the priest to live right here instead so maybe they found a little spot right here and you can create like a path or a route that leads up to that so we can go back and take these kind of stairs right here and just create a smaller path maybe that kind of leads oopsie let's take it down a layer my mistake there we go and we'll just have this kind of path leading off to the side and that's where like maybe our shaman or priest or whatever uh, person that it is is kind of defending it or protecting it or whatever so let's put that one there there so some staircase kind of leading up or you can have it go across like this leading over to there making it separate so maybe they have access to get up to the volcano themselves so maybe you want to factor that in and add it in so we'll add another staircase kind of going up here up to this kind of height right here and maybe that's leading up to there and you have these two towers kind of def protecting that so that kind of works out kind of nice right there and let's see there should be some other things that we can add to make it a little bit more dramatic like you can add in smoke we can add in some paths to create uh, maybe a face or a, a hand coming out of the volcano like a goddess's hand so there are some options and then we also might want to take and use some cliffs as well so another thing that I like to do with uh, my mountains is if you don't like that the line work where where it stops then you can always add in cliffs to the line work to kind of add more so you can go in and attach the line work like this so we'll go in add some more let's go with this one let's see here go with that one and let's add another one in here and we'll just keep adding in a bunch of them here one second here there's a couple that should be useful this one should work just fine here's this one actually let's use this one up against this one i love using cliffs they're absolutely useful for creating depth and height but they are time consuming of course because you're piecing them together so i totally understand if you're like yeah but i don't really want to do that i totally get that that's okay not a big deal let's go ahead and put this one here i think it might match a little bit better and let's go ahead and add in a couple more let's put this one here and so maybe there's a path that kind of leads up into here. You can put a village, little village in right here. And one thing I always like to do, uh, just a quick little trick. I do this in a lot of my, my maps, but it's nice to put together a kind of a, an island or a plateau rock. So I just take this front facing one like this. Yes, they are. They take more time, but they look great. Hey, first time chat, Master Dark Weaver. Welcome, by the way. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and so I'm gonna piece a couple of these together to kind of create a plateau rock. And there are a couple of stamps that I like to use. So I put these two together like this and I line up that line work and it kind of creates this little plateau rock, which is extremely useful when I want to not just have one cliff face. Because again, there's a lot of variety. And so I'll connect these two. Now, once I've connected these two, I wanna maybe group them. And so I can kind of place these where I want. So if I want, I can put one right here copy paste put another one over here like this copy paste put another one over here and of course you can select them all and flip and rotate them now of course if you do that you might have to change some of the stamps around but this way you have two variations instead of one variation so you can put one there copy paste maybe put one in the back right here like this copy that and paste put another one back here like this copy paste put another one a larger one against here or you put a smaller one right here or even tinier one right here like this and now you have some extra landscape to work with 
Now you have some extra stuff to work with, which is super nice. We'll boost that size up. There we go. And remember, just line up those those um, line up those cliffs with the line work of the stamps, and it should work out just fine. So now let's uh, just add in a couple bit more cliffs here. So if I add a cliff right here, you'll see there's some line work right here, and so I can just connect that cliff right against that line work like that. So whenever you see some line work, you can just go ahead and throw on a cliff and that way it will give it a little bit of extra dimension, of course. And you can throw in everything you want. If you want to throw in maybe some different locations, you want to throw in uh, maybe some small, uh, one second here, let's type in orc. Let's say we want to just put in some small orcish buildings in here like this, one there. There's a couple smaller ones, uh, one right here. We can put that on top of this one maybe. Make it a little bit smaller. Up there, small one there. And let's put in a couple more. I want to put one right here. Make it a little bit bigger. And of course, if you don't know how, uh, let's push this down a layer too. So I don't want the line work to be in front. So I'll push down the line work. There we go. Bring that down a layer. And of course, if you're curious like how you get up there, just do that ramp thing. Again, these, these um, bridges work great for ramps. There's a ramp going up to this one, a ramp going up to this one if you want. And of course, you can paint in a road leading to each one of these locations. So now I just a couple more things that we might want to add that might make it more interesting is that we could uh, take this volcano stamp and transform it and make it a little bit taller. So we can change that up. Just make sure you maneuver it properly like this and we'll change it so this goes higher up. So we'll start with that. And we can also add in more spikes. Now, some really fun things you can do with mountains is that you can turn them into spikes. Uh, so let me quickly type in mountain. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, this, these ones right here. This will work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go to transform and change the width really 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 tight like this and so now you have this kind of spike and what you can do is you can add them two on top and of course you can change the brightness to where the color matches properly so you can extend the mountain further by adding in this so let's just do another one let's do this one let's do another one with a nice spike on it uh, i think this one looks just fine We'll go change uh, the width for this one so it's a spike. There we go. And maybe I want to put it right here. I'll push it down a layer. There we go. Go up one. There we go. So you have a nice spike right there if you want. And I'll just copy and paste the same one and put another one on top like this. And then copy paste one more on top of this one like this. So now you have some nice spikes. So that kind of accentuates more of it. And the last thing that I would recommend uh, is that if you have, if you want to add in a light source, so I'll type in light. Now there are no light sources, light uh, for Fantasy World. So just go into Fantasy Battle Maps and you'll see that some light will pop up. So just give it a second to load the art. There's this nice orange stamp, which works already quite nicely. Put it on layer five and then just put that light stamp right on top. And it's going to give some extra pop and some extra lighting. So that way it really, really pops out. Because you would expect a volcano with all that burning, all that lava, or shall we say magma, because it's above. Well, I can't remember which one it is. Magma, lava, one's above, one's below. Someone can remind me. <laughs> I'm not a volcanologist, so I don't know. But um, yeah, add a little light source so that that way uh, it, there's light emanating from it. Okay? Now we can go ahead and just kind of select all of these and we can group them. And this is a orc temple. So I'll go ahead and select this orc temple. Aha, the fire goddess has, is pleased by the arrangement. No one will die this day, no sacrifices. Please, please leave the sacrifices at their houses this morning. All right, 107 changes, sweet. Let's just go ahead and zoom out to see how it looks. Yeah, and of course, just find a texture that fits with this brown right here and then you just paint underneath it, okay? 
that works out just fine. I'm going to go ahead and save 107 changes. Don't forget, if you have any questions, feel free to ask myself or SL Mumby as they are modding the chat. Feel free to ask. Give it a second to save. Maybe we can move on to the next one. Sweet. We're getting a lot done in a very short period of time. I think that was just four or five in an hour. That's not too bad. We're moving right along. I'm probably going to refresh the page after doing about three or four saves, about a hundred, let's see, about three or four hundred changes or so. It's always nice to go in and to refresh the save and refresh the page, just old data. And so it's not a bad idea. I know a lot of people want a executable and I don't blame you. Uh, that's That would be really cool. And again, we can you know discuss that. Join our Discord if you have any questions or requests, of course. Let's just go ahead and review what we've made. We had just did a orc temple. We did a elven wonder, and we did a human castle. So so far so good. We're on track. Let's go ahead and pick a next one. Where are we lacking here? Oh, this makes me want to redo my campaign map. Hey, doggy crimson. Yeah, I mean, putting together, making your own POIs is so much fun. I love doing it. Yeah, there's so many ideas. You just come up with so many fun things. Okay, so I think we're kind of lacking in the undead department. We have uh, two, well, two each, two each. Let's do undead because undead are fun. Are there plans for a, uh, for a library of public made assets like these? Um, well, we're going to be doing a uh, creating stamps, uh, doing what's called group to stamps. So that's a really popular uh, request where you can turn a group into an official stamp. And I do think that that's something that we're working on and it's highly requested. So yeah, we probably will be doing something like that. It won't be like, a, I don't know if it'll be like a public library kind of thing, but it will be where you can probably go to maybe a user's profile and see all their group to stamps that they've made, like all the ones that I've made, something like that. So that is that. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, this Hero Games, absolutely, yeah. That would be a great feature. I think it's on the to-do list or it might be worked on currently, but it's highly requested and I'm very excited about it. So sorry if that wasn't kind of a lengthy answer, but yeah, we're getting there. I'm excited about it. So we're going to do Undead. We've already done, of course, an Undead Temple where you have a pit with swirling undead spirits coming out of it. And we also have kind of an undead wonder where you kind of have this undead demon kind of coming out of uh, these purple nostrils where they're exuding black snot from their nose and bringing the, uh, the snot demon into the world. So yeah, fun stuff, right? All right, so let's think about what we want. Do we want to create an undead village, a town, a city, a capital, a tower, or a castle. Well, we just kind of did a castle, so it might be more fun to maybe do a undead capital, maybe. I think that'd be kind of fun. How would we go about like showing a capital for the undead? Like how would that go about? Like a bunch of undead uh, buildings so we can kind of always think about oh yeah we'll get more castles don't worry we already did one so we'll do a undead capital maybe we can do another castle because there's always castles are always good we've got an elven one and a human one so maybe we can do uh, a a dwarf a dwarf castle or an orc castle so first let's just go ahead and do our undead capital yeah, always capitals, 100%. Okay, cities, castles, more and more. Okay, so undead, I'm going to think about uh, the overall theme that I have. I've got some pits leading to the underworld here, so maybe I don't want to use a pit. Maybe this time I want to do something else. You don't want to go with an armpit. So, hey, you might want to go something different. We'll go back into fantasy world. Where is that castle? It is located in the armpit. It's one stinky castle. All right, so I'm gonna pick something maybe, I do like the dark, the dark mountain, so those might work well, or maybe a hill might work, might work okay. So maybe let's choose some of these dark hills, and maybe we wanna create an arrangement of, oh yeah, many types of undead, ghost, vampire, a wraith. <laughs> All right, well, we'll think about our options here. So a capital, I'm going to start with maybe one large structure in the center. So maybe that can be like 
uh, a some kind of like an undead parliament building, or maybe it's like where the souls go to before they move in to the undead capital to kind of get, uh, you know, a stamp of approval. Like, hey, you're going to have to go into the silver quarter. Hey, you're going into the, the gold quarter. Hey, you're going into the bronze quarter. So maybe we want to create like an administrative building. And so I'll choose an, a dark mountain first, and I'll put a structure on top of that. And I'm sticking with, it looks like there's a green and purple theme involved. So I've got green here and there's some green here. So I could stick with the green or purple uh, kind of form, format. Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong. I hate a castle that looks like an armpit. <laughs> ah, castle anatomy. Woo! So first I want to make that kind of administrative building. And I might want to cho choose maybe an elven building and then maybe change the HSBC on it to what I want. So I think I saw some interesting looking structures like this one right here. This is Elven City. Now it's kind of green and it doesn't really suit well to what I'm, oh, and there's also one right here too. Oops, I used the same stamp. <sighs> Gotta be careful with that. Uh, let's just use this one. I'm gonna flip it so that it's not exactly the same. So I'll flip it with this flip option and we'll go in and change the hue. Now I could go with a couple options. I could just remove all the color and just make it gray or make it kind of an ivory color, maybe by bringing up the brightness if I want. And of course, I'm gonna place this on top of here. So all of these are at layer five. That's not good. Let's start at layer zero. Let's bring this one on top. I'm gonna to make it fairly large. Let's make it fairly big, okay. And I'll show you some fun tricks. We're gonna put in some interesting, scary looking, maybe change the color of the windows or maybe even hand paint it, who knows, we'll see. Maybe add some purple eerie glow coming out of it. But this is like that first section. Now what we can do is do some fun things and maybe have a couple bridges that lead to this centerpiece. So we could have maybe one bridge that leads to this one and then put in a second bridge on the other side so maybe we'll have to do it this way. So we'll put in another bridge right here. Let's take it down a layer. And then I'll also bring down this one a layer as well. There we go. And we'll put the bridge right there. Copy, paste, put another bridge right here on this side. And of course, we might want to expand uh, this a little bit more or put some hills underneath it. If you want, up to you how you want to go about doing it. So I could put maybe some underneath here, like this, if we want, and maybe one in the front like this. Okay. And then you can put like a tower at each end if you wanted to, uh, kind of representing maybe there's some kind of tower with energy that goes in. So we can use those same elven towers. We can use a different one if we want. So maybe use this one. And I will again drop that saturation. So it's just that and the brightness I think can go down just a hair and I'll make it nice and big and put it right up against here like this, copy, paste it, another one right here, copy, paste it, another one right here. And we'll also copy, paste and put one more in the back right here like this. So now we kind of have the centerpiece, and then we can have the rest of the town kind of circling around it. And there are a couple ways we can go about this. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and into here. And if I wanted to, I could go in. I'm just gonna use this right now as kind of a guide. I'm gonna put this at the very bottom. I'm gonna change it to gray. I might even wanna keep it. It might work actually, so we'll just wait and see. Bring it down and we'll change the saturation, change the brightness. We'll bring the brightness down. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna kind of use it as a guide for right now. And I'm using it to kind of represent uh, the circular area in which all my buildings are gonna go around it. So I'll go back in here. And I think those uh, dwarven buildings will work just fine. And so we can kind of create some houses that kind of ring around. I can delete that that circle as well. So I'll put one there, maybe put one smaller one in this corner. And I can also flip and rotate it. So add a couple there. 
Oh, oopsie, it didn't flip it by that. There we go. All right, and let's go in and add a couple more with that relatively same theme. So I'll go in and add this one, put one here. Let's go a little bit smaller and put one here. Here. All right, just one moment. Let's see what else we have. This one as well. Let's throw these in. One there, one right here, a little bit smaller, and one right there. Okay, let's put it in the background so it's behind. There we go. That way there's a little bit of depth there. Okay, let's go ahead and copy paste, put this one in the back. Let's go up a layer. There we go. So push that in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that whirlpool. I just wanted to make the structures kind of go around it. I can actually throw them in, put them in. I don't really need the circle. I'll just bring them nice and close to the bottom of the hill. There we go, put that one there. Oopsie, I realize these are all at negative five. That's a problem. So we'll fix that real quick. There we go. So we'll put one in here. Don't, don't really care for the way that I did it before. Things are gonna change, by the way. If you don't like something, just change it. It's just normal. We'll put one there, one here. Okay, so we kind of have our capital right here with our structure. So we can throw some interesting things on top if we wanted to. Um, if you want, we could. Let's take a look at what our options are. Now, normally, I don't recommend crossing styles, but there are some things that you can do. Let me just take a look at my options first. Maybe I want to put, let's see here. Let me just think for a moment how I want to go about doing this. I could put some interesting things on here. Let me go through the style and just see if there's something that I'm looking for. One moment. Let's take a look. I might want to put something on top of those towers just for something fun. Hello, Dragon Dreams and Squirrels. Welcome. Glad that you're here, by the way. Awesome. Yay, the more the merrier, right? Yippee! Okay, let's take a look here. Mm -mm -mm. Let's just take a gander at our options here. Okay, well, we might switch over to Fantasy Battle Maps. I'm going to do something I don't normally do, which is switch, but sometimes it's okay to do it. If you just type in Skull, we are dealing with the undead, and we don't have a lot of skulls and stuff like that. We don't have any for this style, so it's okay to throw in maybe a couple. So maybe I'll throw in a skull or two to kind of give it that undead feel to it. So let's just take this skull right here, and I can put one maybe in the center. Let's just go bring it up to the front, and I'm going to desaturate it as well, so that that way um, it's not kind of it it fits in with the rest of the stamp because it's sat it's saturated, desaturated. Sorry. I'm going to change the shadow to where the shadow is just directly underneath of the stamp. So it looks like it's popped out more. So I'll just bring the shadow down underneath. And that way it looks like it's popping out. So you have that skull there. And we maybe want to put a couple more, maybe one on each tower. And I'll just turn off the shadow and just put it right on the top. Oopsie. Let's go in one. There we go. Let's just actually make it fairly large. There we go. Now we have a nice skull on top of each tower. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Heck yeah, now we're getting into the undead here. What's happening? There we go. Okay. All right, I think that looks okay. You can throw in some dead trees too. Like you could even circle the whole thing with some dead trees. I mean, it's the, it's the undead, right? So you can throw in some dead tree. I think I might have to switch styles because I'm in Fancy Battle Map 2.0. Go with fantasy world and we'll go ahead and ring oopsie making all these loud noises let's throw in a tree here like this and i'll just kind of create a line like this going around oopsie and i might have to select all those and put them back in the background so boop 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 there we go okay put in a couple right here oopsie that is the path tool i don't know why i'm doing that but okay <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw in some clusters and throw in some randos. Oopsie, that should be uh, in the front because you want them to overlap in the front. So we'll put a couple in there, one here against here. Throw in just a couple. Oopsie, not on the actual thing, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Okay, and we'll put them in the back like this. We'll go back a layer. There we go. Okay. 
And then you can throw in all your texturing and everything underneath. I'm going to rando de delete a couple. I don't want to make a perfect ring of trees to where it uh, kind of looks unnatural. I do want just a little bit. There we go. Just delete a couple so there's some gaps. I'll delete that one. There we go. So you've got some gaps there. We're going to go ahead and select it all, increase the size like this. And we want to stick with the purple and the green theme. So I'm going to take a path. I'm going to apply it. And I think with this arrangement, there's some dark gray in here. So I think purple might be the right color for, for us to choose. So let's choose a purple color, a little bit darker. I'm going to change it to normal for now. And I'm going to add a purple shadow. And we'll go with that one instead. So add a little purple shadow. And I'm also going to decrease the size and bring it all the way up to positive five. Now I'm going to go in and kind of just fill in some of uh, the windows with some purple like this and even even some of the arches like if you want you could have purple purple arches going inside here like this we'll go quickly fill these in I don't want to take too long purple works well with the white and the gray so let's do a couple of these let's put some right here and this in as well I'm not gonna worry about making it perfect but at least you've got some different color scheme. I do think the white and gray works well with purple. So let's add in there. Add in a little bit more here. I'll probably even put some emanating out of the doors as well. And then finally, out of the skulls of um, the skulls coming out of the eyeballs and then maybe connecting to the main tower. So that might be kind of fun. So we'll do that as well. There we go. So we add some purple there. And I see a couple more arches I can add in there. Couple here, one here, here, and even these large arches if you want, up to you. How you want to go about it. Okay, there we go. Just paint it in properly. There you go. Okay, so now you have, oopsie, there's a couple more actually. One right here. My bad. Okay, so now we have some purple in there. Out of that, I'm going to change the width. Let's go like this, just see how it looks. And I'm going to maybe have some purple uh, coming out of the eyeballs and then maybe connecting into the center eyeball here. So that way it kind of represents like maybe there's like a force field that where only the dead can enter this place. So if you were to go through the, the field, uh, you would just die instantly and then become a part of maybe uh, this undead city. So up to you. I mean, capital. So how you want to go about it. So me personally, I think a little... Kind of electricity field going around it will be a nice addition so i'll start with these eyeballs first and they just had like crackling undead energy kind of just going over to the next kind of eyeball and so you can do a couple of them maybe one going over to this one one going over to this one one going over to here just keep adding a couple more and so you're kind of just creating this crackling energy that kind of leads over to the city. And you don't have to add this stuff if you don't want to. If you feel like it's too much, it doesn't look right, you don't have to add it. Totally up to you. And I'm going to add one more thing just to spice it up. And I'm going to take a rug and strike from the Fantasy Battle Map style. And we did the same thing by making a forest field uh, around one of the elven uh, stamps. So I'll show you how to go about that. So you'll notice quickly around this city right here, we create, or this uh, castle, we created a force field. Well, we're maybe going to want to create some kind of undead barrier that goes around this one as well. So I'll just place it like this right on top. I'm going to go to the highest layer. So I'll go up like this. And I'm going to switch, change the hue to purple. So I'll find the hue, get that purple I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the blend mode. So I'll go with Darken, we can go with Multiply, Color Burn, Lighten. I'll we'll just go through the various ones until we find one that looks fairly interesting. I like that Lighten one, that's trippy. There's Screen, Color Dodge. Let's just go through our various options here. Overlay, Soft Light. I'll we'll just go through a bunch and see which one looks the most interesting. Oh, I like the green, that's kind of trippy too. <laughs> oh, that hue is actually kind of cool. I kind of like that. Let's go to Transform and Change. 
the height a little bit so that way it's a little bit more not too perfectly circular but a little bit more oval i'll put that down right here like this there we go awesome so now you have like a purple kind of field it kind of goes around it and you have some purple paths now we can select all those purple paths if we want and maybe change them up so i'll just go ahead and press the alt key and select each one of these paths and we can go through the blend modes so let me just go through the various blend modes and maybe some maybe there'll be some better colors so let's just throw in them in here overlay hard light let's just go through the various ones see what looks good oh you know oh hey that looks kind of cool but i do like that one that looks nice okay and there's also these ones as well let's select these ones and i'm going to change the blend mode to one that looks kind of nice so multiply okay lighten Oop, that won't work color dodge let's just go through the various options here i can't tell you how awesome blend modes are absolutely fantastic use them overlay Ooh, let's go with normal i think it's okay let's go with normal all right i don't think there's anything else to really to add here i think overall this looks okay uh you could probably add a couple more items but you get the general idea you know you want to get some character again like the theme is undead so i went with skulls kind of went with a centerpiece to represent like the hall of the dead where uh maybe souls go to register to go to which quarter because we seem to have four bridges leading leading to each tower and so this capital is split into quarters so you could add in more structures into each quarter even give each quarter a theme um, so up to you, like maybe there's, uh, you want to go, this is where good alignment people go when they die. This is bad alignment. This is neutral alignment. This is, you know, pure evil, whatever, whatever undead Hades underworld Elysium, you know, uh, theme you want to go with up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and group. This. this is an undead capital. So I'll press the group or press, press G key. And I'm going to label it, of course, and call it, uh, the undead capital where the uh, undead, the hall of the undead is. Okay, let's go zoom out and take a look. Yeah, that looks good. We're doing good. We have, how much time we got? 12, 12? Oh, we have room for plenty. Let's go ahead and save, refresh the page. Again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask myself or SL Mummy, who is modding. So we're gonna save this and we'll move on to the next one. Yeah, what fun. Blend modes are, <clears throat> The creme de la creme. You want to use blend modes. They work great. Okay, we have about another 45 minutes left. We can probably make about two or three more. Super awesome. Someone was saying they love castles. I love castles too. So maybe we'll make a, a dwarf castle because we only have two dwarf, um, two dwarven um, uh, locations. So maybe it's not a bad idea to add another one. And I said a castle, so a dwarf castle would be fun. Let's see here, three in each row except for the orc. So let's go with an orc castle. Blend modes can make a huge difference, absolutely. Okay, again, when you're building your castle, you're probably gonna want to uh, put them, you're probably gonna wanna put them uh, on top of something. Now, if you want, you can, uh, remember with a POI, it's just a representation. What happens if you wanna show a keep underground. Let's say that you want to show an icon on the map, but you want it to show that it's underground. How would you go about doing that? Okay, this is a fun one. So we're going to make an elven, or I'm sorry, a dwarven castle that's under the ground. So the first step is to make the overall landscape. And what I'm going to do is use a, use this as a guide. Okay, so I'll place this down. Oopsie, is it letting me place? There we go. I'm gonna use this as a guide. And what we're gonna do is show the representation of uh, looking into a cavern. And so we're gonna use a series of mountains to create both staglomites and stalactites to create a frame. And then we'll put the keep within that frame of stalactites and stalagmites because it's a representation of a location. But sometimes you want to show there's an underground location, but you can't show that on the overworld of the map, right? Because it's underground. So you have to create a scene or an icon that will represent underground. 
So I'm going to bring this down all the way and I'm going to lock it for right now and just kind of use it again, use it as a guide. So red oval, I'll lock it. Now I'm going to take a series of mountains, whatever my choice is, I'm going to turn off fantasy battle maps. I'm excited about this one. Okay, give it a second to kind of load and we're going to go ahead and make a series of uh, stalactites and stalagmites again. Now these karsts right here, these green kind of karsts will work perfectly. I don't expect them to be green, they're underground. So we can go over to filters and we can do some changes. You can change the hue if you want. If you find a nice reddish color or brown, that works fine. You can drop the brightness down. And I'm gonna make sure it's set to layer zero. And we're gonna take a bunch of these and we're going to create a ring and so I'll put a bunch of these together, one, two, one here, one here, here like this. I'm just gonna create a ring. And again, this is a frame for an icon. So we'll do it. So this is your first one, and then we'll create a second one. And I'm going to transform these and bring the height to really make them pop out a little bit more. So I'll add a couple to the section here so they pop out quite a bit. Add one here, there, add another one right there. And let's put some at the top like this. So I'll put a couple up here like this. And I will tr bring the transform back to the normal. And we'll place a couple along this ledge, or ledge like this. Okay, so now we've created uh, an interior. So right here is a frame. And I'm going to connect, probably going to connect these two so that, that way it kind of creates an actual frame so connect these two edges here so there's an actual frame there all right so that part's done let's go ahead and delete that oval rug we no longer need that so i'm going to delete that so now you have inside is where that keeps going to be now you'll notice that there's this clipping mask uh at the bottom of here and so if you don't like that there are things that you can do to fix that we can go into mountains and put them a layer below and we can create kind of a mound at the base. So let's click one and just see how it looks first. Let's drop the brightness down. So let's deselect, change the brightness. So it kind of matches, maybe even change the hue so it's a little bit more reddish. And I'll place a couple of these at the base. So like this, put one there, one here. And what I'm trying to do is just try to remove that kind of, um, remove the kind of that uh, transparency base at the bottom there because it looks kind of looks weird so i'll place a bunch underneath like this to kind of remove that so that's kind of gone and then the same thing only you don't have to put them uh at the bottom you can kind of facing up to the top so i'll place a couple here place one here Place one here. I don't even really enjoy, I don't even think the color is right, so we might have to do some changes to that as well. So if you're not satisfied, don't worry, we can make changes. Okay, let's put that one there. And I think I'm gonna select them all and then maybe I can change them all together as one. So let me just bring them back to here. Let me select every single one of these real quick. There we go, I think I have them all selected. Let's just go back to the general color. There we go, and I think I will just drop the saturation to where they're all gray. Oopsie, I didn't select these ones. This way, they all kind of match. Oopsie, I don't think I got that one. Just, there we go, okay. And I might want to consider bringing this down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, now that I've made that frame, I can go in and make a uh, a a hill or a mountain to where I can put. So maybe make a tall mountain in the back like this. Looks like a gaping mom. I eat your face. Nummy. <laughs> okay. So then we'll add in a mountain right here. And then I will pick uh, a stamp to be the keep. So we'll go in and one moment while things load. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Hey, first time chat. Welcome, glad that you're here. Okay, yeah, let's take a look here. I think, we'll take a little while to load here. Yeah, any one of these might work. Uh, we could also go with 
uh, a regular keep like this one right here. This one might work just fine. So I can put it up here maybe. And I want it to be fairly big. So I'll increase this, put it in front and then increase this one's transform, change the width. So get it nice and wide. There we go. So you have nice wide. And I'll put this one right here like this, right on top. Now there's one other item that I want to add in for fun is that you could have some tall stalagmites just towering over it. So we'll put one towering down like this. Underneath it, we'll put it right about there. Okay, that looks fine. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to paint inside of here a dark color. So let's just first put the keep in there. I might change the hue to something else, like if I want maybe green or uh, a purple might work fairly good. I might wanna change the brightness because it's a dark space. And of course, we're gonna paint inside of here. So let's just paint that in real quick. Let me go ahead and pick a dark, 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 dark texture. So this one right here might work good. Let's just apply it. I'm gonna remove my softness and just go in, make sure it's set to the right layer. Oopsie, BG, my mistake. And we'll go ahead and fill in this section right here. Remember, this is underground. So I'll go ahead and fill this in. I'm even gonna put it to where some of that gray is that light gray is so that way it will kind of hide that and create more mesh when it comes together there we go one second while i put this all together all right nom 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 this dwarf castle is delicious mm -mm -mm. all the dwarfs taste so good you nummy get in my belly dogs get into my belly you're tasty Okay, all right, here we go. Got a nice little keep in there. You can throw in some lights, maybe a defense. You would expect maybe a tower or something. You can throw in all kinds of fun stuff. It's great stuff to throw in. You can throw in maybe a little tower right here. Maybe you want a larger extended tower in the corner. Just place it right on top. Like this if you want. Change the hue and the saturation to where it kind of matches with it. Bring, bring the brightness down. You can put that maybe over here instead. Maybe you want to put it on one of these gaping jaws like this. Maybe you want to put it right here on this ledge. Look at where you'll see a ridge right here. There's a ridge right here. You can put uh, something along that ridge if you want. So we can delete that and put this right here so that you have that. Lots of different options. You want to maybe throw in some light sources. Maybe you want to throw in maybe a couple buildings. So we do have these small buildings right here. You want to put them up against, uh, put them along the, ed the ledge. So maybe you want to put a couple along this ridge line right here like this, along that ridge. Maybe you want to put one right here as well. So up to you how you want to go about that. And of course, you can go in from there and throw in some light sources. Uh, because you're in underground. You're probably going to need some light to see what you're doing, right? So let's go ahead and add in just a few light sources. So let's just type in light real quick. And it can be whatever color light you want. It could be purple, it could be blue, it could be green, uh, orange, whatever color you want. Let's go with this orange one and I'll change the color maybe to something different. Maybe a green color might work fine or you can go with purple or just keep the regular, just go with a uh, regular, whatever. Let me just apply one here real quick first. Let's put one right there, put a light source in front of maybe each building, put a light source maybe on one of these towers where the windows are at. I see a couple windows there, let's put a light source there. So just maybe on just each little window, you can put in a little light source. There we go, put one here. And so you kind of have some light sources right here. And of course you can throw in a large one, a real big one, drop the opacity. So that way, just that whole section has a light source on it right here like this. The whole one, I'll put it up a layer so it's up. And if you want, we can change uh, these light sources. So I can go in with shift and select every single one of these light sources right here. And then I'm gonna use them to make, uh, change the color, see what looks good and what doesn't. So let me go with the hue here and we can see kind of what color 
works kind of best. Do you want to go with blue? Do you want to go with purple? Do you want to go with green? So a lot of different options you can choose from. I do kind of like that that kind of color that looks kind of interesting against that right there. And of course, if you want, you can uh, change and make it darker around each edge. So just take this blast texture we used and make it a little bit darker. So bring the brightness down and then we'll boost the softness and the size and just underneath here, just throw a little bit of dark, that shadow along this ledge. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make these things pop out because that's what contrast is, right? So we'll put in a little bit here like this. Go against this edge here, all along here. Give it a second, a little slow. There we go, okay. All right, now we've added a little bit of that. And I think we can go ahead and just select it all. Now remember, when you're doing painting, you can't move it. So make sure that you have it the position where you want it first, and then you can do your painting from there. So let's go ahead and group that. And because watch what happens when I move the painting. So again, whenever you make whenever you make uh, a POI that you're going to end up doing some painting, just make sure it's in the location that you want it. Otherwise, you'll have to do repainting. Okay, so just kind of factor that in mind. Okay, there you go. Yeah, maybe the uh, dwarves live in a giant, <laughs> a giant creature, right? Inside their mouth. Mmm, get in, my brother. <laughs> Where are we at? 12.30. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we got like another half hour. So we can probably make about one or two more. Sweet. Yeah, the dwarf castle was fun. I just enjoy making uh, underground stuff because you don't get to show a lot of the underground stuff on the maps that you're making. Let's go ahead and take a look at where, where we are here. And you know what? I think I made a dwarf. Uh, I think I made the dwarf in the wrong piece. Let me double check. <laughs> Give me a second. I might have put the dwarf in the wrong. <laughs> Let me double check. Get in my better. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just verify that I didn't totally goof it. I did. <laughs> look, I put in I put in the dwarf uh the dwarf <laughs> inside of the wrong one. You see what I said? Ah, don't goof it up. So now I have to put it up here. <laughs> yes. Hey, when you're here to goof things up, it's your job. <laughs> so now I got to put it up and put it in the right spot. Naughty, naughty. Okay, let's go ahead and center it. And then I'll have to repaint that section because naughty me. <laughs> I'm not even going to worry about trying to uh, do all too much painting. Just put in just enough. And I think there's been a lot of lag too, so I'll probably have to refresh the page. There we go. I don't have to repaint that. Naughty me. How could I? <laughs> it's a Monday. What can I say? It's a Monday. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. Oopsie, I missed the spot right there. Okay, looks good. Oopsie, there's a spot right here that might work. There we go. Boom. All right, yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, I'll have to repaint this one. I can't remember what color it was. Is it the right color? Oopsie. Wait a minute, is it not working? There we go. Weird. Not sure why that's not working. Buzz off. All right, one second here. I'll fix this. There we go. Okay. My bad. <laughs> I'm gonna save and refresh the page as well, real quick, because it's starting to lag, just just the hair. If you have any questions, let me know. Just don't don't accidentally paint in the wrong spot, okay? Don't do what I do. <laughs> don't cue it up like my brain. I got things all backwards. Maybe just backwards day or something. <laughs> okay, we're gonna save, we're gonna refresh the page. We'll probably make one more so i can only just have one more opportunity to embarrass myself instead of two opportunities to embarrass myself <laughs> all right we're gonna save refresh load and do one more yeah i'm excited so that means we'll just have to continue on this stream again next month when we make more i mean it's a great series who doesn't like making little pois for your map right <laughs> 
All right, so we just finished that one. Let's refresh the page real quick. Just give it a second to load. How do you select to make these? How do you mean, how do I select? You wanna clarify what you mean, Dragons? Because I don't fully understand, like, how do I select just the ones? Maybe you can elaborate more, because I'd be glad to answer that question. But my little tiny man brain doesn't work so well. So you might have to give me more context. <laughs> little man brain, I can't figure it out, help me. Yeah, go ahead and clarify that question a little bit, because I don't know what you mean by select entirely. I just, small processing, it's Monday morning, okay? Monday morning. Monday morning, my, my brain is like still in my bed or in the shower. <laughs> because hey, you know, the shower is a wonderful place, okay? <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna do one more. Let me take a look here. Where are we lacking? Oh, we're lacking in the orc department. I think we need to put in one more orc and then I think we're good because there's three for all of them except for the orc. And I think I'm going to do a wonder because I just absolutely love making wonders. I think they're fun. I like this one so much, this elven one, that I think I will make another one. So let's go with that. How do you, oh, well, here's the question clarified. How do you bring up the point of interest to make them, it's the, to make them, I can't explain. <laughs> Uh, you mean how do people use them on another map because we don't have that option yet uh, but soon hopefully we will so unfortunately we're just I'm just showing you how to piece these together but eventually hopefully we'll have a feature to where you can go right in and just copy and paste uh, these POIs and use them for yourself on your own maps because I don't have any issue with people using these these are all made with incarnate so that means it's just free reign to use for anybody once they're once they're uh, added in, that feature is added because I love making POIs and I would gladly make hundreds for people to share because they are so much fun to put together. So I'll make sure to make a bunch of them so that people can use them in the future once we get that uh, feature added. Because And believe me, I'm excited for that feature because I have tons of little things that I want to make. <laughs> I want to make it all. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go with an orc monument, last one for the day last one for the stream so we'll go ahead and stick with that kind of vol maybe volcano theme i don't know we'll see maybe we can look some up oh, there's some interesting volcanoes here mm -hmm. we used a volcano last time so maybe we want to think about what an orc monument might look like hmm we'll give it some thought here i don't know maybe we could make a since we just made an interesting kind of uh creature an interesting kind of like mouth right here. I know it was designed just to show like maybe um, the interior like underground, but we could make a land feature that actually represents like a creature. So we could line a bunch of teeth, like we could make a bunch of, like we could make the jaw of a dragon by piecing together some mountains and some stalagmites or whatever and kind of create uh, a geological formation that looks like something else, like a dragon or a giant or something like that so maybe we can go with that so if i'm going to do that then i have to like maybe figure out in my head how i want to go about that so i think i do like these right here these work great i think these would work just fine as teeth and so we'll make first a jaw and so i'll have to do some paths and kind of sketch it out first so if i want i want to make a jaw like this and have some teeth going up from there and then maybe a jaw going up like that. I'm not entirely certain how to go about it yet, but you get the general idea. We want to make like a dragon's head of some kind and then we can maybe put uh, some buildings on top of that. And I'm sure you've seen maps where the geography, maybe a landmass looks like a dragon or uh, this mountain range looks like uh something else so we'll be following that kind of a theme so i have the jawline here and i might want to change things up so first i'll bring this down to layer zero i'm going to change the width and i'm going to get rid of those shadows i'm just kind of going to use it as a guide to make my teeth so first we can make this one we'll copy now i've got this nice angle here and we'll throw in another one and I can even rotate them a little bit, throw in some smaller teeth. 
in here. Okay, and then we might want to consider rotating it. So let's go over this way, put it like this. There we go. And I'm going to create a row of these kind of teeth because we want to create the lower jaw of a dragon. And so I'm going to take some smaller ones like this and put them down. So I'm kind of creating these large teeth. Let's put one here and put one right here and put maybe a larger one in here. Let's go with this one. Okay, and we'll put in some smaller ones in right here. Okay. All right, so first step is just trying to get uh, the first part of the jaw. So we have that. Let me go ahead and turn this path off. I don't really need it anymore. I just wanted to create first the general shape of a jaw, and then from there I can either make a second one or I can just piece together a bunch of mountains to kind of make the overall jaw. So it's up to you how you want to go about it. So let's just try this method first. If it doesn't pan out correctly, then we can go and because you don't have to make it massive too. So let's start with first, there's that lower jaw. Let's try putting together a bunch of mountains and maybe make the whole head first. Maybe, maybe that'll work a bit easier. There's a little bit of experimentation involved when putting it together. So let's put a dragon head. Let me think about this. This is kind of a, a tougher project and it will take a little bit longer, but it's a challenge, should be fun. All right, yeah, okay, I will figure it out. Don't worry, I have ideas. My brain is operating, sort of, about about 12%, you know, my norm, okay? Hey, don't be dissing now. 12%'s a lot, okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so I think I have an idea. I think I will start this way, and I'm going to go with filters. I'm going to remove all the saturation, so that way I can uh, don't have to worry about changing color. And I think I'm going to make like a horn that goes on top. This is going to be the horn, and then I'll have to make uh, a body or just just the head and maybe some of the neck. I'm not sure. So this is a horn right here. This is going to be kind of rough, but I think we can do it. I think I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I know I can do it. All right, let's just keep going. Whew, this is going to be rough. I got this. I got this. All right, keep going. All right, yeah. All right, let me just take a look real quick. That looks okay. And then from here, we can go in upside down and kind of make the flatter gum gum part and maybe some teeth and then I can make the jaw the bottom part and I'll put all those together to kind of create a dragon's jaw like cave that is the wonder for this all right Weehoo, fun stuff all right let's go with the transform tool I'm going to change the width really wide and change the height really really low like this so that that way I can kind of create flat underneath let's just scale it down Ooh, this is a lot more challenging than I expected, and that's, that's cool because I love a good challenge. If it's not hard, why am I doing it? <laughs> okay, so now we kind of have that, and then we'll keep going. Now, I do like these right here. These will work just fine as teeth, so I'll push these on here. I can do it. I can do it. Believe me, I can do it. <laughs> okay, so we'll make some teeth here. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these and bring them down. I'm also going to increase this a little bit bigger so that I can see it better. I always like to zoom in quite a bit when, I, when I'm working with something or make it really big so that way I can kind of see everything. So I'll go ahead and throw in some teeth here. Boom, there we go. This might take a moment, so just bear with me here. Yeah, we want some, some teeth. This is a dragon's naughty. Just like just like the dwarves. Get in my belly. Okay, so we'll put some teeth in here. There we go. Heck yeah, we're getting somewhere. We're getting we're getting there. I wasn't happy with it at first, but now it's uh I'm 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 slightly more pleased. Yes, yes. Okay, put that up there. There we go. Keep adding in more teeth. Alright. We're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. All right, throw in another one right there. 
Okay, we'll keep going. I think that's okay right now. Let's delete these other ones. There we go. Okay, so now to put the horn in the kind of the front. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more harder than I expected, and that's quite all right. Just jaw going up. And I might even want to copy and paste it and maybe rotate. I'm not sure. Let's go with this one. Okay, let's go with the next one. I'll put this down below. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Okay, we're going to get this. Flatten this out. Super challenging, but I am enjoying it. Okay, flatten it out. Okay, is that? Nope, let's put it below. It wants to be below everything. There we go. And we're going to leave a little bit of space in between. I'll put a couple more. These can also work as kind of teeth. There we go. And then we're going to want to close off the cave. So go with a large one like this. And we'll keep going one second. Just push this off to the side like this. We'll keep going. We're not done yet. Don't worry. Okay. We are getting there. Whew. All right, all right, and we'll throw in some bottom teeth for the jaw, and then I'll have to create some other stuff as well to kind of be more seamless. So this one, and then this one, I think. There we go. And then I can throw in those teeth. Okay, so put one right there, one right there, here. And put one right here. There we go. Okay. So you got some teeth. There we go. All right. Oh, let's throw in a couple more. Let's put one right here as well. And I will push it back one layer, I think. Let's try that. Oops, not the right one. One second. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks okay. All right. Now I can push this up here. We have a little bit of a mouth here. And I might want to consider adding in a couple more items. Let's just add in uh, some horns on each side. So I'll put one right here. Copy paste this one. And then put another one in the back. Oopsie. Bring it back one. Another one. Keep going. There we go. Further back. Right here. We go and then I can throw in I can finally kind of make it a little bit smaller there we go and then put in some of the larger mountains in the back oopsie wrong one there we go all right just so that the cave has to the edge there not really my favorite thing but it works <laughs> I don't think I prepared for this one <laughs> don't think I brought prepared properly for this one <laughs> I don't know what this is it's something I have <laughs> it's a, a really screwed up shoe with teeth <laughs> yes love it okay yeah we're not done yet we'll keep going I got some more fun ideas don't worry <laughs> okay let's add that in here push that down okay I'm gonna want to create like an eye socket I think so give me a second to put that together and I'll show you how I want to go about that it's a weird dino rhino oh, I love that that's even better dino rhino <laughs> <laughs> awesome yes fantastic thank you <laughs> I'm keeping that one forever the dino rhino yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome okay yeah we'll keep going we're not done yet we got we got a little more to do here most time, 44. Yeah, I knew this one was going to take forever. <laughs> I had a feeling. Okay. Uh, don't worry. I have ideas on how I'm going to overall fix this. So now I'm going to go in with a path tool and create an eye socket. And I'm just going to use uh, a black path. I'm going to apply it here first. And I'm probably going to turn the blur on. Bring the blur down. All the way up and bring the width. Here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply that to here like 
this and okay don't worry I got you oopsie we wanted to bring it maybe up one there we go all right one second we're not done yet don't worry we're almost there <laughs> okay now I get to give my my funky guy some cool eyebrows, you know? I mean, if you're going to do it right, if you're going to do eyebrows, do them right. Like, who doesn't like spiky eyebrows? I want spiky eyebrows. I mean, I really do. I want spiky eyebrows. That'd be super cool, right? Who doesn't like spiky eyebrows? Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> It's so weird, Rhino. This is probably my least favorite one, but it's also the funniest one out there yet so far. <laughs> hey, everyone's got a flop once in a while, including me, okay? <laughs> uh, awesome. Sweet. I'll make it nice and small, and I'll throw in the last bits of mountains at the bottom. <laughs> throw it in here. Okay, there we go. We're almost done. <laughs> it's a weird dino rhino. <laughs> I love it, dude. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, I'll throw in a couple stamps in here. Just going to kind of create a little bit of transition here. So we'll put one there, put one here. There we go. And I'll put one maybe right here. Put one in the back right here. I'll put maybe just a rando one right here. There we go. So the rock, it's looking a little bit better there. All right. <laughs> I could make a flop look so good. If only it would look good. It looks ridiculous. But hey, whatever. It works. <laughs> it works. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I just need to remember the rule. Don't ever do anything unless you're prepared for it. <laughs> Don't ever do it unless you're prepared. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw in some last pieces here. And then I'll call it good. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Fun stuff. Hey. All right. Yeah, it works for me. Not the best, but hey, it happens. It's a Monday, remember? Someone's got a case of the Mondays. Oh, I don't think I like that one there. Let's put it back there, maybe. Yeah, I think it looks better. There we go. And I think I might throw some smoke kind of coming out of it and maybe throw in some light and then paint in uh, something in the dark there because it is kind of a cave. So I'd expect it to be a little dark in there. So we'll go and just throw in this texture here. Make sure it's set to the right layer, of course. Or not. There we go. Okay. Or actually, let me go with actually do something different. Maybe it'd be more spooky to add in uh, a reddish color. So I'll go to Fan or not Battle Maps 2.0, but Fantasy Regional. And I'll grab a lava texture. Maybe that would look kind of nice. So we'll go to Fantasy Regional. Dragon Skull Cavern. Well, it doesn't really look like a dragon. It looks like a really messed up dinosaur that, I don't know, some evolutionary process that really screwed up and didn't really help them. <laughs> oh yeah we'll throw in a little bit of red just for fun you know yeah okay there we go throw in some red there and you know what i think i'll throw in some smoke and throw in some different colors maybe some orange in here and then i'll throw in a last bit a little bit of yellow in the back here like this and then i'll throw in some smoke of course Uh, there we go, throw that in and put some coming right out of there like this. There we go, so you have smoke coming out of there. And I want to do a couple more things. Let's make this one nice and large and kind of have it overlapping uh, the eyeball. So that way there's a little bit more depth there, which is always kind of nice, right? Throw a little bit more depth, so I'll throw that one on top like that. And I think that's it. Let me go ahead and just save that. <laughs> Not my favorite point, 
point of view, but hey, my favorite point point of interest, but hey, it was fun putting it together. I'll definitely have to uh, spend some time making more of these to get it down right. <laughs> but hey, it works, right? <laughs> All right, we'll let this save. And if you have any questions, I can do like a little bit, a last little Q&A for the next 10 minutes. And we can get that started. And we'll have to finish this next month so there'll be a part three and most likely a part four as well these this is a pretty popular stream i know that people are always trying to figure out how to put down uh these interesting composites so we have a lot left here oh yeah this is probably about two or three more episodes left in this so we have lots of time to create a ton more so that's super exciting don't forget that we have a stream on the 4th, which is Wednesday, and that's how to create your heraldry. And I'm super excited about that. I made a little uh, chart or diagram that kind of breaks down the elements of heraldry. And I'll, we'll be making a bunch of different heraldic icons and stuff in that next stream. So that that way, if you want to put heraldry into your map, you want to put it next to a capital city, you want to put it in, your, in a map frame, you'll have it there. So yeah, super exciting about that. And we have a whole bunch of fun ones coming up. Next week, we've got how to create world maps with the fantasy regional style. Super stoked about that one. We have a cosmology, how to make a cosmology map. So for you world, about world builders out there, you have a vision in your head about uh, all the different worlds and realms that you have, you'll be able to put together a cosmology map so that that way there's some perspective about all the different worlds in your uh, universe. And we'll also be continuing City Blocks Part 2 with the fantasy regional style. And let me tell you, I'm excited about that. Commander Bond. A whole stream of rock creatures, you say? Mm, well, I rather like that. Rather dash cunning of you, Commander Bond. And then I think we're also, the following week, we have, we're going to continue on our map makeover, Part 2. Amelia made an awesome map called Veneria. And we were doing a map makeover of that. We're also going to be burning some villages. <laughs> it's time to put your pyro on. Because we're going to cut some buildings on fire. <laughs> it's going to be hot, baby. Real hot. And then, of course, at the end of the month, the last week, or, or second to last week, we're going to be doing political maps. So if you don't know how to put together your political maps, uh, we're going to be doing that. So that will be very helpful. We're also going to be showing you how to create rivers and, of course, how to make mountain ranges with Fantasy World. So that's what's going on with this month. Again, happy Monday. It is Monday the 2nd. We missed it on May Day. But hey, happy May, everybody. The summer's coming. We're getting some sun. Yeah, I'm excited to go out and have some fun. Go ahead and ask any final questions that you might have. And then I will go ahead and take my lunch. It's been a great stream. All of these have been so much fun. I am looking forward to making more of them. Hey, and don't forget, for those of you who don't know, we do have a stream request channel. So, hey, if there's a stream that you would like to see none, go to our Discord, join, and then once you get into Discord, make sure you get the Incarnator role in the roles channel so that all the channels will be available. And then head over to, head over uh, to the, I think it's called stream requests channel go ahead in there read the instructions first and if you have ideas go ahead and do that uh, the next stream is going to be on Wednesday the 4th that's this week and that's how to create heraldry now for those of you who can't make it to the streams don't worry we post every single stream to YouTube so that you can watch it lots of replay value there okay I think that is it unless people got any questions but hey that's it. Thank you, everybody. Really enjoyed. I'm looking forward to doing this one again next month. And we're going to fill in every single one of these boxes until we have all the different ones. And hopefully by then, we'll have uh, created the group to stamp option. And that way, you can just take these right off of this here and put them on your maps as you see fit, because I love it. All right. Thank you, Commander Bund. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for making it to this stream. And I will hopefully see you all on Wednesday on how to create your heraldry. All right, now you take care. Please stay safe and healthy and merry mat making. I'll see you all very, very soon.